first basket since the six and a half minute mark of the third quarter. And the adjustment here, Debbie, from Lindsey Gottlieb to get a quicker defender into the game yep. and Kayla Williams. It's paid off the last two trips. Now defending on Walker up top. Andrews blocked by Juju, who keeps it alive and gets it to a teammate. What a play defensively by Juju Watkins. The ball pressure of Kayla Williams on Jada Walker. Four blocks for Juju. That's why she's one of the more complete players. We're getting ready to see another one in the next game in Paige Beckers. Watkins way off. From the bench, yelling out to her, don't settle. She's been able to beat people off the bounce. Under three to go, three-point lead for the one seed, USC. I had little Paige Bug set some ball screen action right here. She's got that big on her. They go Iverson cut over the top. Andrews almost lost it. That's the screen I want right there. Now, good job reversing sides of the floor by Walker. Williams able to jar it loose. Six on the shot clock here on the baseline inbounds. Watch out for Walker stepping on. She aware of the clock? Andrews, the leaner, way off. Air ball and a shot clock violation. They lost track of time. Time now for tonight's Star Stories, brought to you by Honda. And the numbers for Walker and Watkins tonight. Juju's team with the three-point lead and the ball, 2-11 to go. Forbes will handle the ball handling duties now. Trying to get it to Juju, here she is, under two to go. She's passed the last couple of times, not this time. Off the bounce, steps into the lane and draws the foul. I mean, the hang time, the change of pace, the patience in reading the second level. The other thing that USC has done is they've kept Baylor off the free throw line in the second half. They have not fouled on the defensive end. They only have one team foul, Beth. Keep an eye on that as we move closer. USC three of five in the second half. Juju is six for seven, so this gets her to her daily average. Seven makes on eight attempts. Makes it a two possession game. The one seeds, South Carolina, Texas, Iowa, all winners and all into the Elite Eight. USC trying to join them. An 8-0 run. Triggered by the defensive change to bring Williams in. Andrews gets a clean look and knocks it down. Full court pressure. It opens up the floor a little bit for Juju. She'll slow it down. Help coming from Andrews. A or Edwards, they make her give it up. Nobody guarding Kayla Williams. Everybody looking to load to the ball. And the pick by Andrews. And a foul called on Forbes. With 1.10 to go. This is another great play right here. Cut off the penetration. Ice ball screens, keep them on one side and active hands. That's Andrews making plays at both ends for Baylor here. That's because Walker can handle two on the ball. Makes a good read right there. Bumping a foul on Kayla Williams. 
playing some of the most critical moments of her season right here. As Baylor tries to unseat a top dog. Final minute for a spot in the Elite Eight. Edwards off the flare screen. Offensive foul and a charge taken by Davis. That play was just too slow developing. It gives Davis a chance to step in and draw the foul. Possession arrow is with USC. And is Gottlieb going to call a timeout? Yes, she is, I think. And she also uh, motioned to advance. Both teams have timeouts left. Both sides are in the ball. Or, uh, let's see, SC still has a foul to give. Maybe just straight up good ball pressure right here. Forbes to run the show. Can you keep the ball out of Juju's hands in this set? Oh, losing her shoe is Davis. Sneaker on the deck, trying to get out of the way of Watkins. Juju triple team, finds Davis inside and she missed the layup. They're gonna have to review this. Call on the floor though is USC ball. How did Davis get her shoe on and then get open under the basket? And then couldn't make the gimme. I mean, she was so wide open. Crazy the sequence the there. Is white ball that is being reviewed. It's got to be conclusive evidence to overturn it boy that's a close one yeah Let's see what the officials come up with i i think it might be baylor's ball right here it looks like it goes off yeah that Aco looks like, yep right so that the officials decide and determine at the monitor then i'm sure baylor's going to call timeout if it's their ball to advance it both coaches can utilize this time as a timeout USC has one foul to give. That is like fingertips for both sides near the ball there. Call on the floor would keep it with USC with five seconds on the shot clock. If it goes to Baylor, the shot clock is off. Well, they're unless gonna... they put more time on at 29.3. Well, if it goes to Baylor, they're gonna call timeout to advance it. Okay, we are closer to a decision. They come together. Here. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Okay. Again, the, the call is USC ball. And it will remain, after all, that USC ball. So you D up hard right here for Baylor. And you better rebound. If you don't get the rebound, you have to foul immediately. Down two. Five on the shot clock. 29.3 to go. Pre-switch by Baylor. They lob it inside to Watkins. And a foul with 2.9 no. to go. Reaching in is Fowleroy. You do not want to foul. You, there were three on the shot. They invert their defense, so they pre-switch. So that when the ball comes in, you can have the right matchups. Wow. And now Watkins, who's eight of nine at the line, 84% on the season. Two makes to make it a two possession game. Three timeouts for Baylor. And USC does have a foul to give. and Watkins has scored the last seven in crunch time for the Trojans. Obviously, Baylor did not want to foul.
Two timeouts left for the Bears, one for USC. And this is uh, on the right side of your bracket. The upper right, we already know, Iowa and LSU and a barn burner 7 Eastern on ESPN Monday night. And then later here in Portland, USC Baylor, UConn Duke fighting for those two spots. Uh, you can get a quick two here. And you can extend the game. Now you don't want to foul Juju Watkins, so you score, you deny her, make someone else. And we'll see who who she's gonna put on yeah, the floor. We'll see yeah. who she puts on the floor. I mean, I'm going to I'm going Caitlin to foul Davis. Caitlin Davis. Yeah, 24 and White would be the one. It's 58 percent. So I would look for a direct feed to the block. Look for a little cross screen action here. 10-3 run over the last three and a half minutes for Southern Cal. There's, There's the, the inbound to Edwards. There's the cross Back screen. to Andrews looking for three. Banks it in. One point game. And a timeout to advance for USC. Off the window for Andrews. Sarah Andrews sets the cross screen, then comes around for the handoff. This is very well done. She sets the screen, then she comes right over for the handoff. Excellent execution, and she'll take the bank. Her fifth triple of the game, ninth for Baylor. If I'm USC, I'm trying to inbound the ball to Juju, and I'm doing everything I can if I'm Baylor not to let her catch. Let her step to the ball and catch it. If you're Baylor. She runs in the totally opposite direction. And they do get it into Watkins. Double team coming and a foul. Andrews whistled for the reach in. Her fourth. And Juju to the line, but now even two makes, it's still a one possession game. Right, so then you're gonna call timeout, you're gonna advance the ball. Now let's see what happens here, because you know, I, I know we've been talking about that foul that USC has to give. Mm -hmm. If you're going to take that foul, you better take it on the dribble down, not on the dribble up. You don't want to let the officials think that you could get caught in the act of shooting. 29 for Juju. for Watkins. 12 of 13 from the line and a massive fourth quarter for the freshman. Last inbound, they went for the three and got it with Andrews. Watkins able to get over the top of the screen that time. Back to Andrews. No good, rebound Marshall. And a foul immediately. 16th rebound for Rhea. I didn't and like, it will be her first trip to the just, line coming up. Didn't like the options there. Just the play was too slow developing. I mean, it's Edwards and Andrews playing on the top of the floor. She did have a good look, but it was a deep three. Marshall's a 68% free throw shooter, needs one to make it a two possession game. See, the problem with going for the three, that took, it took too much time. Yeah. And as long as you still had a timeout left, I might have considered the quick two in the paint, put a little pressure on USC around the rim, not to foul, and then try to extend the game. In and out. And the final timeout for Baylor to advance. 7.5 to go, down four. She just really needed to make one to make it a two possession game. Now you gotta go for the three. Just not Forbes. She's on the inbounder. Edwards for three. Doesn't get it. Out of bounds to Southern Cal with 1.2 to go. Are they going to review this? The out of bounds call on the floor is white ball. This play is under review.
That might have been last touch by Juju. After just a, an incredible regular season for the Pac-12 Conference in its final campaign, they pushed five teams into the Sweet 16 and now trying to get a second team into the Elite Eight. Oregon State's already there. And USC, that berth within their reach right now. What a season for Baylor. I mean, what a job Nikki Collin has done. 26 wins. They won eight of the last nine. They got to get it right. The call stands. White ball. They are trying to advance in the NCAA tournament. They're being evaluated on this right now. They can't just let it go, even though the game's over. So they have to go to the monitor and look. So an inbound away from advancing here for USC. And that'll do it. Southern Cal will fight on. And this remarkable season continues into the Elite Eight. For Lindsey Gottlieb and the Trojans, they will face UConn or Duke on Monday night. Can Juju Watkins and company find a way to the Final Four?